I lived in a little country village. Not many men, because the old ones were killed in the First World War. So there were all these old women, and they used to say, you'll be a great man one day. Da, 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 da. You'll be a doctor, you'll be a policeman, you'll be a... And I thought, no, I won't, no, I won't. <laughs> I thought I could have been a poet, but I thought, I'll never know if I'm a good poet, because poetry is measured by people's praise. It's a subjective issue. And my father could do poetry, he could do languages, and he was bossy. So I thought, how can I do something that he can't reach? So the modern world, physics, maths. I found maths and physics very beautiful, very easy, actually. I was teaching at Leeds University, and I got myself a wife, a child, a PhD, time to move on and London beckoned. I came for an interview at Arabs. A man called Coffin interviewed me, offered me a thousand a year, and I wrote back to say I accept the job, but 1,100 would be better. So I came to Arabs. And for me, young man in a hurry, I was only going to London for two years so that I had a good CV to go to the only place in the world in the 60s, America. Right? I'm, st I'm still going. I found in Arabs, values that I appreciated, that I understood, that I wanted, that I didn't dare seek because I didn't think they existed. There were no locks, no clocks. In other words, you didn't know it was nine when you came in and you didn't know it was half past five or six or, or whatever. You know, it was a, a lock-free, clock-free place. And I thought this was a first name place. I never thought there could be a commercial business that had that culture. Not that they knew the word culture. You know, that was just what the old man did. It was like going to a cafe where there's a funny owner of the cafe. You know, he doesn't write a book about the culture of the cafe. After a few months, I saw Ove, and there he was, old, dry skin, white hair. My father <laughs> had a run away from my father, crashed into this old chap. So I avoided Ove, just didn't seek him, didn't ask his advice, didn't ask his praise, and so on. I go into the lift one day, and there he is. And I don't look at him, he looks at me. He says, I suppose you think I'm a silly old man. And I thought, he got me. He got me. Luckily, the lift stopped, the doors opened, and I shot out. <laughs> I had so much respect, I had to distance myself from him, or I'd get crushed, squashed, shadowed. I think he understood my reluctance to embrace him. They put me on the Sydney Opera House. If you look at a picture of the Opera House, it's great sailing pieces of spheres. But they all sit on little A-frames, tiny little ugly strong that fill the geometry, the catch in the corner. And they put me onto working them out one off at a time. And I enjoyed it. But maybe the project which is deepest inside me, easily the most formative for me, was a monument that the Shah wanted. We ran off its geometry, we ran off its materials, choosing the marble, how do you fix the marble? We did a lot more than structure. We, in, in fact, did what architects claim they do. It was the first instance where I wasn't deferring to anyone. I learned that I could, that I could do things, that, if I, that my judgment wasn't bad. And for me, my period in Iran was magic. I did a lot of work in the city of London, banks. I used to say, I only work for banks and kings. When I became chairman in 95, I thought I would be a wise king. I would sit on the throne and people would bring problems and I would make decisions and life would be beautiful. 
but it wasn't like that. It, 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 the water was flowing a lot faster than that. So I put on my swimming trunks and swam like mad. And I set up a reformation of the firm, which was basically break the firm into five blocks and choose half a dozen of the leaders from each of them to run it. In other words, self-empowered. And that worked awfully well. It had lots of collateral damage and it cracked me at times. And there was bad times, but it changed the firm. And, and there's still the residue of that structure today. I found architects hard work. Because architects are creative, they actually tell what art technically lies. On the other hand, architects are beautiful people. They're lovely to be with. They understand food, they understand drinking, they understand leisure, they understand conversation, they understand beauty. Good for me, because that's not what I got as a child. So architects have been a liberation for me. Engineers are team workers by definition. Engineers are grey. Engineers accept the laws of physics. Engineers accept economy. So engineers will always be team players. No engineer knows enough, right? And therefore you need all kinds of engineers. You need brave ones, you need frightened ones, you need diligent ones, you need imaginative ones. Engineering is minestrone soup, you shove it all in, you stir it, you boil it, and you get the most wonderful outcomes. And, and Arabs is about teams, all about teams. In Arabs, anonymity is held to be a virtue. What makes a good engineer? Humility. Honesty, consistency, calmness, brains, obviously. Uh, truth, if you know what I mean by truth. Imagination, courage, needs courage. If you're the engineer who's signing off the drawings for a kilometre clear span, where the container ships are sailing in and out under it, where one cable snapping might be a lot of lives, right? You'd need to have the skill to sleep well at night. I'm terrible, I hardly sleep. I'm hugely optimistic. I, of course, I talk to anyone I meet. I've done everything I ever wanted to do. I'm very happy, very, very fulfilled. <laughs>